Greetings and salutations. My name is Kirk Nelson, and it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to this course on Advanced Photo Manipulation Movie Poster Effects. First, let's begin by way of introduction. I refer to myself as your friendly neighborhood graphics geek. I have over 15 years of experience as a professional graphics designer. I am an Adobe certified expert. I've been published over 200 times in various internationally acclaimed industry publications, and I am a regular instructor here at Tuts Plus. I am happy to bring this course to you, and if you haven't taken any of my other courses, let me explain that my entire goal with my courses is to help my students build and grow as artists. It is not merely to show you how to use specific techniques, but I want you to understand the fundamental reasons behind them. My goal is to teach you the design process as well as discuss the decisions made for each element within the composition and the project. So you're not only going to learn technique, you're also going to learn theory. That is the goal of each of my courses. I don't want you just to learn how to control a piece of software. I want you to learn how to make creative decisions. So if you finish this course and you've grown a little bit, it's challenged you some, and even if your final project didn't turn out exactly how you were hoping it to, just the fact that you've picked up some skills along the way means it's been a successful course, both for you as a student and me as an instructor. So for this course, we have a real treat in store for you. We are going to be creating a movie poster based upon the popular summer blockbuster Pacific Rim. Now, of course, that is trademark material, so we will be calling ours Specific Rim, and I'm just simply showing how to create the effects very similar to the posters that was created for the marketing of that film. Now, each of the photos that you will need to use for this project are included in the course files. These are all photographs that are taken by me. If you've taken some of my previous courses, you may recognize some of these elements. The space shuttle shots were taken at the Air and Space Museum that is local to me and was used in the space scene course. You may also recognize my drawing mannequin from the figure drawing course. Now I'm including all of the pictures you might potentially need to use for this project, not just the specific ones that I used and we will be going through in the course lessons. I'm giving you more than that. I'm giving you all of the ones that I have here that you may possibly want to use for your own project. These are not copyrighted. These are simply my pictures that I grant to you for your use. So feel free to use them as you see fit. Also, this course is using Photoshop CC. If you do not have a Creative Cloud membership, I fully encourage you to get them. Adobe has some really good deals on obtaining Photoshop now. It's very inexpensive, and we will be using some of the new Creative Cloud features in this project, so I fully encourage you to get that. If you do not have Photoshop CC and you're using an older version, I will try to show where the features are in the older versions of Photoshop, so you can still work through the course material even though I'm using Photoshop CC. Additionally, I will be using a pressure sensitive graphics tablet for this course. There's some steps later on where we will be hand painting with some custom brushes to create the effects that we need. And if you don't have that, it will be difficult to simulate the final effect. I will address how you can try to work around that, but really it's to your best interest to obtain one of these if you're doing any type of high-end graphics work like we're going to be doing in this course. Now this is an advanced photo manipulation course, which means I expect expect that you already have working knowledge of the Photoshop program and that you have some experience in manipulating photography. I will not be going through exactly what every feature in the program does. I expect you to already have some working knowledge of the program. And also because of the depth of this project, I will be demonstrating a technique that is used multiple times, but I won't show you the use of it every single time. I will simply teach the technique at first, show how it works, and then skip ahead to show how it has been used on several other areas within the project. That is the only way to keep a project of this scope within a single class, or else it would be several hours long. So with that all being said, let's close out this introductory lesson and move on to lesson number two, where we will be discussing resource photos.